Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Marcus. Hey, I'm GT. GT, giant triceps. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yep. nice. You could, nope, yep, can't see it. I can feel it though. <laughs> it's there. Hey, in the last video we talked about uh, data collection, and uh, in this video we're going to talk about transport. So basically, you know, the process of taking collected data and getting it into a processing system so that we can actually do something useful with it. So we're going to talk about you know, this in three sort of steps, which we call serialization, tunneling, or, you know, like the sending process, and then the message queue or the message bus, uh, which is how we sort of handle the data once it gets there. Exciting, huh? Yeah, so I live, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm riveted by our own content. Uh, so I have not, I don't think I've told anybody, I live in Arkansas, hopefully you can tell I'm not from here. But uh, I handle two customers. One is a large food supplier based here in Arkansas. And the other is a large, really large, the largest retailer based here in Arkansas. So I think a good example here is thinking about manufacturing and supply chain for a retailer. Um, so when you think about that, there are the manufacturers, which is the collector of the data. And they go, you know, then it, that, that information that that good leaves their facility and then something has to happen to it. It gets transported and then distributed in certain ways in order for uh, goodness to happen at the end where you can go online or you can uh, walk into a store and get the goods. We need to do that for our cloud. For our cloud, we need to do that. Yeah, I like this retail supply chain analogy or like a manufacturing analogy because you know, there's all these steps of like manufacturing or producing the goods and then getting them to the final destination. Um, you know, this first step, which we call, you know, I, I said serialization, which is kind of like the, the fancy word for it because I'm insecure and I got to do that. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's really just the idea of like packaging up data that's been packaged in or that's been like produced or can collected already. And so, you know, th this is similar to sort of like the manufacturing analogy is that like a manufacturer makes the stuff, but they're not really optimized to like to, to like deliver it all the way to the end customer. They're they're optimized to make the stuff and then package it up so that it can be sent someplace else. Yeah, and the analogy is good, but it kind of breaks a little bit here, and that is that we are so you know extreme gear produces the content, the the data, if you will, but our cloud is the consumer. Uh, so think about the transport system as that. Now, you as a customer, you do get to consume the data, but that's different. That's like three videos from now or something. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to uh, just narrow that down as you know, we are, our cloud is our own customer. But the analogy still, still fits is that we need to be able to get that information from the collector securely to um, you know, the, the cloud, if you will. That's, that's our goal is to hit that, that first step of the cloud. It's like a manufacturer taking something that they've made and, and, you know, putting it on a pallet and shrink wrapping it up. So that serialization, but then they got to then go to the next step, which is like, okay, now that it's packaged up and ready, we've got to actually transport it and send it from A to B. So like in this case, we move to like step two of the transport stage, which is like tunneling or the sending of data. And this is kind of like a step that for most networking people is pretty familiar because this follows sort of known you know, networking protocols that are used in a lot of different management and control systems. Yeah, like the, the CAPWAPs and GREs of the world, just secure control data, yeah. right? Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. And this is- So that data, uh, sorry, go ahead, I was- No, go, man. I was just say that, that that movement is called data in motion. Yeah. And where I first heard that term is when like we do RFPs or if we have to, again, we have a new customer and says, hey, is your cloud secure? We have to answer a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. For example, is your data encrypted in motion? This data in motion, is it encrypted? The answer is obviously yes. And how is it encrypted? How, you know, is it something old or is it something modern and new? And, uh, you know, that has to be answered on those questions. So that's the first time I heard about that data in motion, but that, that makes sense. It's a little bit like, I, I know, again, since we've talked in other videos about how old I am. So I was watching Knight Rider the other day because I just really like that show. And it's interesting that if you think about cops and robber shows, when is, it, when is the gold always stolen or the goods stolen? It's almost always in transport, right? It's yeah. going from A to B. You know, the prisoner or the gold gets on the truck. That's when it gets attacked and it's the, it's the most uh, vulnerable. Hmm. 
Yeah. So that's why it's securing this in this process is so important. Once it gets into data center, arguably a little bit easier. Right. Well, and that you know, that idea of a data center, well, I think about like this from a cloud perspective, you know, because that's how we operate. But, you know, thinking about these tunneling protocols in like the security, like in motion. But then once it gets there, you know, it makes me think about this, like, the, the benefits of containers and microservices start to show up even even here right at like the the tunnel terminator so like if we think we, we use CapWap obviously for access points sending data into the cloud so like you think of that as like a CapWap server but in the cloud it's actually it's usually a cluster of CapWap servers that are you know this is a microservice um, like this tunnel terminator and then you can scale this by having many containers that are clustered together, load balance. And then, you know, when a new device connects, it, you know, gets sent to one of those specific cat web servers with redundancy and failover and all that. So you can scale this process up, this transport process, as you keep adding devices into the cloud, you can scale that cat web, you know, endpoint up, which just makes the whole thing, you know, flexible and scalable. Yeah, and within reason, almost infinitely. Yeah. As much money as you know, Extreme pays into the cloud, you just keep getting more and more capacity, which is it's really amazing. And the more I learned about the cloud, how it's just it's just really cool. But this model that that Marcus and I are talking about in the grand scheme of networking is actually fairly new. This is a push model. So everything we've talked so far is these network devices are just sending data to the cloud about you know, what's going on, but that's not normal, at least especially when I started in networking. Right. It used to be that that process was SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, where you'd have a network management system and that would be located, you know, either in your facility if you had one location or a centralized location, and it would do what's called a pull model. It would actually go out and request, hey, Marcus, you're an access point. Tell me about yourself in the last 30 seconds. How, you know, what's been going on with you, right? It's like a therapy session for an access point <laughs> for a switch. You said you were insecure earlier, so I think I'm thinking about how we should, what we're going to talk about after this call. Uh, but, <clears throat> but th so that's that pull model, and that just doesn't work anymore. A, it's kind of old school from the perspective of, it used to be optional. Oh, are you running SNMP? No, no, I'm not. I I'm not doing network management. I'm not big enough. That that's old school. Today, everybody's running some sort of management program because uh, the cloud provides that just inherently. Mm -hmm. You just kind of get it with it. So that push model, here's all the data, Mr. and Mrs. Cloud. Take all the data, do whatever you want with it. That's kind of how the model is today. Yeah, and you said 30 seconds, which I know was just the number that came in your head, but um, <laughs> that's definitely generous for a poll model. It was usually like 15 minutes or 30 minutes or something slower than that, just because it's it's just less efficient, you know, because we gotta on we gotta have a scheduler that's gonna go out and fetch from you know many distributed nodes, you know, on the schedule. So it's just less efficient. But also, you know, you, you bring up a good point, which is like a campus is one thing. But when you talk about like distributed networks with lots of remote sites, it's a whole different, like that pull model is a whole different story when it comes to security as well. And just like ease of use and management, which is like the centralized node is going to go reach into the network. So, so like an outside in model, um, you know, and the cloud doesn't work that way or, you know, a, a good sort of cloud model doesn't work that way where it reaches from the outside and has to have firewall ports open to go in and, you know, reach devices and pull them for information. The push model allows us to, to initiate from the inside out so that you don't have to open firewall ports for that thing you know that's inside and trusted to be able to get through out into the cloud and send the data so it just changes the whole security dynamic as well from a data exchange perspective right it actually enables you to have that zero what's called a zero trust security network mm -hmm. which is which is really good so marcus we've talked about the two things serialization which is packaging that data up we've talked about tunneling and sending it and now last is that that last portion of message queuing or that message bus. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit like continuing with the manufacturing analogy is if you think about the retailers, if I'm a television, it's weird to even say the word television, <laughs> a display. If I'm a display <laughs> manufacturer and you know, I know that my displays are gonna get, get sold at you know, a dozen different retailers, there has to be some sort of point where I take that from my manufacturer, I put it in a warehouse where it's only my my TVs, my displays, and then trucks are going to show up and take that to, uh, you know, maybe you know one retailer, another retailer, and another retailer. Whether it's mom and pop shops or all the way to the big ones, 
Um, so, so that's kind of how this message bus works, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's there's there's multiple people who have things to give, and there's multiple people that want things that you're giving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good way to good way to think of it. So, you know, we've tunneled it to the cloud. The clouds, you know, that service decapsulates it and puts the data into this message bus, which is just like a data brokerage, you know, s service basically. And so, you know, we use a term like producer and consumer. So, like a producer would be the entity that's you know, producing, the, that's collecting the data and sending it into the bus. And then a consumer is the entity that wants to, you know, take the data off the bus and then process it and, you know, do pretty graphs and all that kind of stuff. Um, or, or like sometimes we call this like pub sub or publish subscribe, where the publisher, the one sending data in is the same as a producer or like the subscriber that's the one that wants that data. And usually these must message buses are, you know, organized so that you can subscribe to specific topics of interest. Um, so, you know, this message, you know, bus or queue sort of serves all these different purposes that allows us to scale and facilitate the sending of data and then the consumption of data or ingestion of data at the cloud. And one of the reasons for the message bus is that the, the, the publisher and the subscriber is rarely a one-to-one -one model. Right, yeah. In the, in the manufacturing, it's a kind of like a one-to-many. So if I'm, again, making displays, I'm going to, they're going to end up at dozens of different retailers. So I kind of have to split that apart into, you know, take my product and, you know, send some to these many, many different places. Is that, so that's kind of the way we're doing this here, at least in the cloud? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, point that like it, it facilitates that many to one or one to many relationship. And so like the analogy you gave is kind of the reverse of what we experience in networking, which is typically like many distributed nodes that are collecting data. And so like these are the publishers or producers sending data into the system. So you might have thousands of, you know, I'm a wireless guy, so I think access points. So you know, thousands right. of access points sending data into this system. And then you might have, you know, a cluster of ETL, like which is like your well, well, it's like the task that basically is going to ingest this data. You might have a cluster of five or six, you know, ETL nodes or whatever, you know, so it's like brokering that many thousands to just a few consumers. It also does something else, which is um, if you think about like that process of publishing data in and consuming data out, those might happen on different time schedules. And so the publishing uh, in might be something that happens, let's say every minute, but your ingestion task might be every two minutes or five minutes or whatever. Um, and there might be some delay between those things. So, you know, it can function a little bit like a holding tank for this data or like a cache that basically brokers that process so that, you know, your consumption task can catch up while more data is still coming in and there's no loss of data in between. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to do a little summary if you don't mind. So cloud needs to securely send the data. So that data needs to come into the cloud, if you will. So we're going from the collector, we've just now transported it to the cloud, mm -hmm. has to be done securely. It has to handle thousands upon thousands, even thousands, I'm gonna write number. A cloud, like one of our clouds, has millions of devices worth of data coming in all the time. Uh, so it needs to handle that, it needs to be able to scale for changes. Um, there's lots of different types of data that's coming in. Uh, and then WAN bandwidth is actually an interesting thing we haven't really talked about on purpose is that um, WAN bandwidth has to be minimized. Uh, in a perfect world, and this, this is a fictitious world, all the data that happens on a network would just be duplicated and then the cloud would handle it. That, that isn't possible today, right? We can't do that if ever can we do that. Uh, but that would be optimal. So, there, so when you can't do perfect, there has to be some decisions made. So that WAN bandwidth has to be we can't just send data as, as often as we would like. As a, as a manufacturer of networking equipment, our, our you know, customers would not be as happy if we just sent every single little piece of information because the WAN could get saturated. So mm -hmm. there has to be something there. Yep. And then the last piece is avoid any lost data. You know, always keep that data moving um, and then always keep that data there because that, as you said lots of times, which I love, is that data has a ton of value. Yeah. Uh, not only too extreme as being able to provide insights for our customers, but you as a customer, for you to be able to also gain your own insights and and maybe uh, things about how your business is operating is also good there. Yeah, I mean that's well summarized. And and the only other thing I would I would add there is like, you know, the idea that this cloud that's receiving it, we sometimes think in terms of like a global cloud, but this is usually a regional 
cloud data center or like a set of data centers in a region, which means this data is being sent and kept and stored someplace that's, you know, geographically, you know, close to those devices, which is the nice thing about sort of a, you know, a geographically distributed cloud. But, you know, the way that you summarize it, this is an important step and we'll, we'll keep saying it, data is valuable. And uh, we're trying to build a solution that, you know, keeps extracting that value from data for our customers, so. Well, awesome. Uh, great job as always, Marcus. Love it. Thanks, man. Likewise. I love the, I love the stubble. <laughs> you actually have gained stubble since we started this video. Yeah. Uh, which is, it's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> nice. Um, but thanks everybody for, uh, for watching yet another video from us. And uh, great, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, thanks folks. See ya.